Hello everybody and thank you for your interest in our contribution to Eagle 2023, which is called From Mining to Profiling, a computational literary case study on gender features in literary texts. We are Mareike Schumacher from the University of Regensburg and Marie Flü from Hamburg University. Today we present the results of a case study which we did on gender aspects and character features in literary texts. In the next 20 minutes, we will introduce the focus as well as the key questions of our case study. Following this, we will introduce the corpus we work with and explain the methodological process. Finally, we will um, share the results. In terms of this, we will shed some light on the global architecture of the network we built and then introduce five types of social patterns we discovered by studying gender roles. In addition, we will explain what we mean when we talk about the gender sphere. While in the natural, physical and social sciences the inclusion of feminist theories and methods are already been done, this inclusion is rare in computational literary studies. Nevertheless, the advantages are already becoming clear. The value of an inclusion into CLS can be seen in the fact that deep-seated and anchored co conceptions about gender can be broke down through feminist-orientated data mining, such as Rody did. This finding fits the recently observed bridging between digital humanities and cultural studies, in which in addition to gender, critical and feminist theory also um, strives to intervene with the digital humanities. And this is where our case study begins. We follow an explorative approach, bringing together feminist theory and computational literary studies. Um, we focus on the connection between two areas of interest, gender roles and character features. With our case study, we want to find out if there are stereotypical gender roles that keep reappearing in the corpus and if there are overarching patterns of, character sorry, of characterization in a corpus of narratives. Furthermore, we were curious to see if the distribution of gender roles pointed to a particular social um, structure. One important element of our case study is a theoretical text on gender roles, namely Simone de Beauvoir's The Second Sex. But why is that? Published in 1949, her text is still one of the best known and important texts in gender studies, as it marked the beginning of a new understanding of gender um, as made rather um, than given. With findings like the ones shown in the slide, her text has a de um, decisive um, influence on the discussion of gender aspects and has introduced a new way of looking at culturally shaped gender identities. And in terms of gender, one can find an extensive analysis of binary and non-binary gender roles here. These gender roles are characterized by de Beauvoir with a whole lot of features. Um, this is important for us because we want to extend the basic understanding of gender um, as a binary phenomenon into a broader, multifaceted understanding of gender. And then we want to operationalize <laughs> what a word, um, it for the computational literary studies. Um, de Beauvoir's assumptions are based on psychological and social science research as well as on study of literature. Um, in her text, she mentions more than 100 primary sources um, of relevance for gender-focused li literary studies. In terms of a pragmatic approach, we, we reduce the corpus of more than 100 texts mentioned by de Beauvoir in her study by close reading and annotating the first 20,000 tokens in 19 different novels. Once again, um, we follow a pragmatic and very explorative approach um, to find out more about the characterization of non-binary roles in literary texts. Um, we decided to annotate the opening passages because we assume that characters will be introduced and thereby um, described in detail here. The density of character features is therefore likely to be particularly high. As mentioned before, we used manual annotation to find out how characters were described within our corpus. We annotated different texts and used guidelines in order to reach um, consistent annotations. Within discussion sessions, which were an integral and reoccurring part of the annotation phase, we checked on difficult cases and open questions. 
Basically, we annotated four different units, um, which we will explain by referring to one example sentence from Stanhold's novel Red and Black. Firstly, we annotated features, which we understand as long-lasting characteristics of literary characters. In the example sentence, the gray hair, the high forehead, the nose, and the not bad face um, are annotated as character features. As you can see, in this example, we annotated physical characteristics visible from the outside. In addition, of course, um, we have annotated a great variety of um, psychological characteristics as well. Furthermore, we annotated descriptions of clothing, um, such as the wardrobe of a character and accessories. The gray suit is an example for clothes um, uh, yeah, as a character feature. Thirdly, we annotated all characters um, actively participating and intervened with um, other characters in the plot. Here we used three different categories, namely male, female and gender neutral. As you can see here, Lord Renal is one of the male characters. Last but not least, we annotated gender roles like major or knight and assigned them to the character they refer to. After annotating character features, characters and roles, um, we transferred them into networks. You can see a prototypical network on this slide. Um, additionally, we always linked the annotations to the novel they were mentioned in. After the annotation phase, we built separated graphs for the 19 novels and one large network, which involves all of them. By comparing the different networks to each other, we made out five different types of reoccurring social setups. And by interpre interpreting the whole graph, we made out what we call a gender sphere. Okay, so before we go into more details, some words uh, or some more words on the network's architecture. There are five different types of nodes um, for characters, for clothing features, for physical and psychological features, for roles and for different novels. Um, the edges link roles and features to characters and characters to novels. And the algorithm is suitable for graph with more than 100 nodes, um, yeah, which seems to be a good choice since our big graph contains um, round about 300 notes. Okay, thank you Marie and hi everybody from my side. So let's have a look at the graph data and if you look at all of the gathered data in one graph this is what you get. What this overview shows you is that you have lots and lots of characters in the corpus that are characterized with few and not very distinctive features. These characters are situated in the middle of the graph and then there are many characters that are described in detail using very individual features. And those characters are often protagonists and you find them at the margins of the graph and they are building these happy little feature clouds you see all over the graph. But what kind of features are often shared by characters and are they gender specific? To answer these questions, we first focus on the center of the graph. The most common feature is young. This feature is situated right in the middle of the graph and shared by characters of all genders. Small and old are also very common features shared by lots of characters of different genders. And although pretty, beautiful and poor are situated a bit more towards the female sphere of the graph, they are not really distinctive features of female characters. There are also many other characters described using these features. If we move our focus towards the male sphere inside the graph, we do see some features that are more often used for describing male characters than characters of other genders. That is, for example, noble, fame or dissipated. But these features are also used a lot less often than the ones I mentioned before, which means that in total they are not shared by a lot of characters at all. Similar picture on the female side of the graph. Here we see lovely, big eyes, ugly and naked, for example, that are a bit more frequent than other features and often shared features of female characters. But again, they are not very frequently used altogether. As we had the impression that characters are much less often described with overarching than with individual features, we took a step back from this huge graph 
and develop networks for each of the novels inside our corpus. Analyzing these smaller networks, we realized that, based on features and gender roles, some patterns showed, which we divided into five types. The first network type is the society or family setup. As mentioned before, characters are shown in dark blue, features in light blue, clothes in pink and works in yellow. Gender roles are represented in red for male roles, green for female roles and gray for neutral roles. So in this family or society setup, we have a bunch of characters that are all described by a whole lot of individual features. Most prototypical example of this type is War and Peace by Tolstoy. The second type is rather a subtype of the first one and we call it society through the lens of one protagonist. Again, you see a bundle of characters described using many individual features in each of the networks, but always one character clearly sticks out. Dorian Gray by Wilde or Juliette by Dussard and Nana by Solar and the brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky all represent this type in a prototypical way. Third type is a multi-protagonist setup. In this type of network, you find many characters with a profile, including individual features and roles. And then you have a small number of characters that are described in more detail. Little Women by Alcott is a prototypical example of a four protagonists setup. A classical triangle situation is narrated, for example, in Balzac's Lily of the Valley, in which Felix falls in love with Henriette, who is already married to Comte de Morsouf, who happens to also be a friend of Felix. As you see, the networks based on character features and gender roles are also able to mirror some of the narrative strategies used to construct the novel. A very striking case of this effect can be found in a typical star network, which is our fifth and last type of network. In Elliot's Middlemarch, the protagonist Dorothea Brooke is described in an extraordinarily detailed way. She really sticks out in the whole corpus, having the most dense profile. But we also can see that her characterization is maximally different from the profile of Edward Cosabon, the man she chooses to marry. So you see here from the network that they literally have nothing in common. Of course, conflict is unavoidable. But we also have two other star networks with the novels Artificial Silk Girl by Coyne and The Well of Loneliness by Hall. Coming back to the fact that we started off searching for features that are more or less distinctive for characters of different genders, we then turn towards the gender spheres of the novels. And again, we found something interesting we would like to share with you today. In our corpus, we mostly included novels of the 19th century, but we also have two novels from before and some from the 20th century. In order to keep it showable in slide format, we divided the corpus according to this timeline. So here you see basically the same networks, but colored differently. We colored all nodes in gray, except for nodes of the type gender role. We colored male gender roles in red, female in green and neutral in blue. What becomes visible now is that in these two narratives being Decamerone by Boccaccio and Juliette by Dussard, there is a male and a female sphere that rarely mix up. And then there are a few neutral gender roles a bit all over the place. The picture stays quite similar for the 19th century. Male and female spheres oppose each other and neutral roles are a bit all over. And you can also see that characters described using mainly masculine roles clearly outnumber characters mainly described using female roles. In our research, we are highly interested in finding more gender categories than only male, female and neutral, and also in detecting kind of breaking points for stereotypical gender descriptions. So put in other words, we are interested in the question of when genders like male, female and neutral start to crack and when do new categories such as diverse or queer emerge. Is it sufficient when a character is described using mostly female roles with an exception of one male role? Because as we see from our graphs, this happens quite often. 
or does it have to be at least two roles of an opposing gender category? However, a character showing female, male and neuter roles in its profile in an almost balanced way can be seen on the left. Moreover, this graph altogether is more colorful, which indicates that there is no clear distinction between a male and a female sphere. The whole graph shows a less binary gender setup. And by the way, the character showing this interesting gender profile is Joe from Little Women by Alcott, published in 1868. So this example shows that at least one character pushing the boundaries of a binary understanding of gender can be found as early as in 19th century literature. Moving along our timeline towards the 20th century, we can see some very slight differences. Firstly, characters are described using less gender roles. Secondly, there are less clearly distinctive gender spheres. But still, characters described using mostly male gender roles outnumber characters described mainly by female or neuter roles. Again, we have one novel with a character that is clearly pushing the boundaries of binary gender categories. This is Stephen who is the daughter of two parents that had been so sincere that their child would become a boy, that they named the child before birth and then just stuck to it. The network also shows that a character described only using female roles can be situated between two characters described using only male roles. So similar to Little Women, we have a more scattered gender sphere here. As a last kind of outlook or insight into our ongoing research, I want to come back to the graph including all of the 19 novels in our corpus. Looking at it in terms of gender, you see two quite clearly divided spheres, the male sphere in the north and the female in the south, and the neutral in the middle. So what you see is that the graph builds a gender scale with a male and a female pole and neutral in between. The graph also shows that there are some truly neutral roles that stick to the middle and others that are rather situated towards the poles. Child, person or darling are used in a really gender neutral way, whereas human is more often used for characters showing more male traits and creature or thing are more often used to describe characters with more female traits. But where do we find our not clearly binary characters Stephen and Joe. Stephen is situated here on the left, almost outside the scale. Joe, on the other hand, is situated here behind the female pole of the scale. But one has to say that Joe shares quite a lot of features with her three sisters, so that's why uh, she is positioned here. So taking Stephen's position to single out some more possibly unusual characters, we could identify Dorian Gray and Felix de Vandenesse, as possible candidates for pushing gender boundaries. And we also do find some characters described using only male roles on the female side of the scale, such as Sido's brother Achil, for example, and some characters described only using female roles on the male side of the scale, such as the mother of Felix. To conclude with some preliminary results, we would like to repeat that Shared features are mostly not very distinctive in terms of gender and characters are often described using individual, individual features. Networks based on character profiles, including features and gender roles, can be divided into five types, being society or family setup, society through the lens of one protagonist, multi-protagonist setup, triangle and star network and of course some of these are subtypes to the others. The earlier novels in our corpus tend to show more clearly divided gender spheres as the later ones. Characters are mostly described using roles of one or two genders being either male or female and neutral. Sometimes character profiles show either male or female and possibly also neutral roles as well as one role of the opposing gender. More rarely, they show two roles of an opposing gender, and seldom they show an almost balanced amount of male, female and neutral roles. 
Whereas characters showing this rare profile clearly push gender boundaries, we are not sure what to make of the slightly more often found characters showing two roles of the opposing gender in their profile. Our whole corpus shows a scalar gender sphere in which male and female are the opposing poles and neutral roles are situated in between. Characters pushing the boundaries of traditional genders are rather found at the margins of the graph. But to verify some of these findings and ideas, we would clearly need a bigger corpus. And this is where I would like to stop and thank you for your attention. We are very much looking forward to discussing this topic with you in Monopoly. And of course, you can also at all times get in touch with us.